Gorliva are brought to church by Orthodox faithful as a memorial for their departed loved ones. There is much theological symbolism in this tradition. In this video I am making a small bowl of Gorliva. If you want a larger platter, just double these quantities. The ingredients are a cup of whole grain wheat, a cup of sesame seeds, one cup of icing sugar, half a cup of sultanas, half a cup of pomegranate seeds, a third of a cup of slivered almonds, a third of a cup of chopped walnuts, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of chopped mint, one teaspoon of Greek coffee, and one teaspoon of ouzo, plus a third of a cup of blanched and then roasted almonds if you want to use these for decoration. Spread the wheat grains on a flat surface. Inspect them and remove any pebbles or dark grain. It's good to do this three times as you pray the prayers for the departed. Rinse the wheat thoroughly with cold water until the water becomes clear. Boil the wheat in a large amount of water, since it will take about 40 or 50 minutes until the grains are tender, you may need to top up the water once or twice. While the wheat is boiling, toast the sesame seeds until they become a light honey colour. Spread the sesame on a flat plate to cool. Toast the slivered almonds next. When the sesame seeds have cooled, grind them into a grit. When it starts to fold over, it's ready. This is how it looks. And this is how the wheat looks when it's tender. It's important to rinse the wheat several times over until all the sticky starch has been washed away. This is another rinse. Many people use towels and sheets to lay the grains out to dry them. I find it easier to spread the grains in a colander and place this in a warm oven about 60 to 80 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. In order for the drying to be uniform, I stir the grains a couple of times during this drying process. We don't want the grains bone dry. They remain moist, just not wet. Now, except for the sesame and the icing sugar, mix all the other ingredients in a large bowl. Notice I forgot to put in the ouzo. When the grains are mixed well, put enough of the mixture into the presentation bowl, but don't fill it. Make sure to leave at least 10, maybe 15 millimetres for the layer of sesame and icing sugar at the top. Now I'm adding the ouzo, better late than never. The layer of sesame acts as a barrier and insulates the seeds below from the osmotic effect of the sugar on top. Mm. 
This is oven paper cut to shape. I use it to help smooth the surface. I usually leave the icing sugar layer and the decorations on top until the morning of the service. This is so as to avoid the icing becoming damp. Once the surface is smooth and the bowl's edges are clean, we can decorate the surface in many different ways. Stencils are quick and easy. Alternatively, you can decorate using the roasted almonds or nuts, sultanas or any other seeds to make a design bearing a cross. Here are some stencil patterns. You can make your own out of cardboard, just remember to attach grips so you can remove the stencil without smudging your design. May your efforts to prepare Koliba be blessed and may the memory of your loved ones who have fallen asleep be eternal.